Hey crafters, it's me, Jen Evers, with Quality Crafts, and woohoo, it's Friday, we made it to the end of the week, this is the first week of me going back to my day job, and um, it's been wonderful, I really like my schedule, and I like the kids that I'm with, so it's been really cool. Um, if you're new to my channel, Free Play Friday is all about me teaching you or showing you something new, and just experimenting and having fun with techniques and that sort of thing, so if you enjoy that, join us every Friday, live at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, we do one other live, and that's every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So join us for that, for the 1 in 10 by Jen, where I take a bunch of scraps from a member or a subscriber, and I set the timer for 10 minutes, and I have 10 minutes to make a really cool card out of whatever they sent. So today we're going to be working with Yudi. Last week we worked with Yudi a little bit too. Hi, Lori. And um, this week we're going to be working with a little bit more. We're going to be doing some faux glass flowers that look similar to these. Maybe not all of these exact same kinds, but something similar. And then I hope to get to um, doing a chipboard piece with the gold UD so that I can show you that you can make embellishments that look like metal which you can do with regular embossing powder as well. You don't need this pot to do it, but there are some different kind of techniques that you can do by using it. Um, this is one that I made by pouring out my leftover UD and then putting some mica on. So there's even this really thin piece from where it uh, poured out that you can sort of see through. Most of it you can see through, and as you can tell, it, it will crack and um, come apart. Oops, <laughs> flying all over the place. But it will crack, so you want to make sure that you don't make too big of a piece. And when you're mailing this stuff, um, just know that. There's something called um, Flex, F-L-E-X, which you're supposed to be able to add to the UD that will make it more flexible. Um, but now that it's so hard to get to the, get the melting pot anyway, I don't know that that's really a necessary thing. I have... Um, all my powder in here right now, you can see there's just a little bit on this side that hasn't melted yet. If I make a shadow, you can kind of see that. And they say not to stir it too much because you don't want to get a lot of bubbles in it. But I'm going to stir it a little bit because I want to get that last few pieces out and melted. And then um, we always stir it when we add color anyway, so I don't know if that really makes that much of a difference. I guess it depends on what you're doing and, and how you want things to turn out. I'm going to set this to the side because it's very warm from sitting on top of there. Uh, putting that on top makes the UD melt faster because it keeps all the heat in there. And I wanted to make sure that I had that melted uh, so we could get started right away. Uh, the first ones that I did didn't turn out that great. It takes a little bit of time to get used to it. Here's the first one that I made. I feel like maybe that... Whoops. Whoops. Maybe that light is a little bit too bright. Um, it looks like faux glass. But a lot of the petals kind of stuck together and I wasn't really happy with it. But I wanted to keep this to show you guys that um, not everything that I create right off the bat is perfect. <laughs> this is real crafting. I did, however, try that again with a few less layers and I moved a lot slower and ended up with this one. And I, I'm really quite pleased with this one. It looks really pretty. I did make a real small one in the middle so I didn't add the bling that I added in the other one, but I think that one is very, very pretty. And then I tried one with a small one. I know some of you guys really like to see like what what's the end game here, Jen? What's the end game? So these are this is what we're shooting for. Faux, faux glass flowers first. This one we've got some um, tie dye effects going on. Let me see if my there we go. We've got some tie dye effects going on. That's really pretty. And this one too has a little bit of brown or bronze and blue in it. They're just gorgeous. And what I would recommend is, since you can see in here that there's two different pearls, what I would recommend is getting the pearls that are clear like this. The melting pots are still sold if you look on eBay. I just saw somebody say, can you get still get one? <coughs> Check on eBay. Some people are selling theirs 
and um, you can sometimes still find one. So if you really, really want one, um, you can do that. Although next week I'll show you a bunch of ways to use UD uh, with your heat gun that you don't need the melting pot for. But what I was going to say in regards to these two flowers is I would recommend getting the white pearls like these and using your alcohol-based markers. The water-based markers will not work. It has to be alcohol. And then you can color them. So I would put them together, I would drop in my pearl, I'd wait for, wait for everything to cool off, and then I would take the marker and I would color that to match your project. If you already have gems that are multicolored like these, then you're all set. You can use those as well. I'm just saying if you want to um, make sure that you always have the right color and you don't want to buy a hundred different colors, then always buy in white. White trim, white pearls, white bling, or like crystal bling, um, like these these right here. You can color these as well. Okay. And so I could color one on here. Let me show you just so you get the gist of it. I'm going to do pink because I just tend to use a lot of pink on projects. So this one is just a clear gem and I am going to just color pink right over the top of it. Trying to be careful not to color the flower itself, just the gem. Okay. And this is a Spectrum Noir marker. It's alcohol based and check that out. Gorgeous, right? So you could do any color you wanted in there. Okay, that was just kind of a side note. <laughs> I want to get on to making some of these really cool flowers. These are my favorite because I just think they turned out the best. Um, but I do, however, really like this one. So I'm going to attempt to do a couple of these um, with you live. And I have some of these already cut out, so you won't have to wait for me to cut so I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to kind of imitate this one. So I've got a large one. They're all different sizes. I'll have like a medium one. Let's see, is this one, this one's slightly different. This one is two. And I think I had four layers. So I'm just, I'm jumpy because <laughs> I want to make sure I'm not burning myself. These handles are safe to hold. Um, the rest of everything else is pretty much hot. You don't want to touch anything else like that. Alrighty, so I'm going to try to find one more tiny one because I have that little teeny tiny one in there. I want to show you that as well. And then I'm going to show you a few things that you can do with them because these are all, if you notice, they're not flat. You can manipulate them. You just have to be very, very careful. Don't burn yourself, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is take my tweezers and I'm going to put these in. And you have to have a mat like this to drop them on. And... You know what? I'm going to go and get my little black one here. This one is heat um, resistant, but so are these black mats. And this is just going to give me a nice um, background to put these on. So I'm going to drop in the larger one first. Give me a second to just make sure I get the best view here. There we go. So you can see it. And then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to make sure that it gets coated and then I'm going to let some of it drip off and then drop it on the mat. Sometimes it drops, sometimes you have to drag it, it just depends. Yep, these are papers that were cut out of 110 pound cardstock by Nina and it's exact index cardstock if you're looking for that um, kind. You see how it bubbles? A lot of times it bubbles, that's okay. Don't worry about that. And I'm going to show you something else in just a second, too, because, like, my little thing is, my tweezers is sticking there. If you leave the tweezers in there and rub it off, you should be able to get some of that off of there. Heat it back up is what I'm saying. So drip this off. See, now here I broke my little... I broke my little petal. I ripped it. This dries pretty darn fast, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to get this right off of here. There we go. Whoops. And I'm going to pull this off. Just don't, please, please, if you're going to try this, don't burn yourself. And I think we can maybe get that petal to settle down here, but let's try this one now. We'll keep going. Sometimes I make mistakes too. This isn't easy. I've watched a couple other videos as well. I always watch other people just to make sure that um, I'm seeing what they're doing 
and um, I'm tweaking my videos to respect what you guys are looking for, that type of thing. Um, and sometimes I make mistakes. So I want you to see those kind of mistakes because um, a lot of the videos that we watch are like cut and they're not live and it just seems like, oh, I should know how to do this like right away. No, it's not always like that. This one should be dried and cooled by now, the larger one. And you can take your little scissors and you can cut off some of that UD. And because this is still really just clear UD, ultra thick embossing enamel is what the UTEE -E stands for. I can just dump it right back in there and let it melt again. This one's ready to go too. This one's got a couple of strips on it that I'm going to cut off. Also, some techniques work for some people better than other people. It just depends on how you do things and how you're comfortable doing things. Not The way I do my techniques is probably not going to be the exact same way you would do it because we're all different and we all have a, we all have our own perspective on how we see things. So that always comes into play. Now you're saying, now these don't really look that perfect. So how did you get that other one to look really perfect? Well, I'm going to show you. Basically, you can reheat UD and make it um, just like other embossing powders you've probably seen. You can reheat it and make it flatten out or you know, disappear or run down. Hey, Susan, Gerald, Brenda Gentry. I should have stopped and said hi to everybody. I just want to make sure I have time to get all the stuff in because it's just so much fun. Now I'm going to peel up the stuff that we got when we just kind of dropped them on there. This is all clear UD, so I'm just going to plop it right back into the pot. I'm not going to waste it. You don't need to throw it out. And then I'm going to use that. Now this is an excellent way to show you why you would want two embossing guns. So the embossing gun I usually use to do embossing powder with is this one. This one is very hot and it, and it blows very fast or very hard. So this would blow everything around is what I'm saying. Now when you're working with stuff like this, you'd probably rather go with something that's called the Heat It Craft Tool by Ranger. This one is more like a hair dryer, but it blows very, you can't use a regular hair dryer, guys. It blows a lot more softly and it still gets hot. You can still emboss with this. It's just gonna take a long time. It might be kind of frustrating. So I, I highly recommend the other longer one if you're going to do embossing and stuff. All right, so what I wanna do, now some people like to make sure that they, um, put it back in and put it back together. Some people, okay, so what I'm saying, some people put their flowers together as they're going because it's really difficult to get these things to stick together if one is dried and one is wet. They just, they just don't adhere. It's like you have to have both pieces wet, put them together so that they can dry together. That's, that's one really big point. Thank you, Susan, for putting out the links. I really appreciate that. Um, Invite your friends, too. I've noticed a real big decline in uh, people watching the videos. I'm not sure why that is, if it's just that summertime that people were just out and about so much or... Yeah, hi, Diane. So I'm going to heat this one right here, okay? And then I'm going to heat this one. And I'm going to dip this one back in there. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, first... <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get this into like a, okay, first step, third, first and second, third. It just, I tend to craft by just what I know and just go with the flow. And sometimes putting it out exactly step by step is sometimes a little difficult for me. But I'm going to start with the big one. Remember, you have to have, actually, I'm going to start with this one because I want this to be bendy. So let me show you how I'm going to bend this back up. I'm going to get it a little bit warm, but I'm going to try not to get it so hot that I burn myself on it. I'm hoping that petal might settle back together again, but we'll see. Okay, and when it's warm, you can bend these petals up, but don't burn yourself. Use a um, use your tools. Use your tweezers or your scissors or your bone folder or anything 
that is heat resistant, okay? And now that I have those up, I can grab onto this and I'll be able to drop this in and just touch the base to the glue without burning my hand. And I'm gonna take it to the larger flower and get this wet so that the wet will stick to the wet. <laughs> You're welcome, Brenda Gentry. I did the same exact thing when I was in your spot. Like, I don't need that heat tool. I'm never going to use it. Now I'm like, oh, dang. I re there are some things that you really, really will want to have it for. Uh, now, this is my technique. I'm going to dip this in here so that it rewarms the one that I'm holding. And then put it on top of this one. Because I was heating that one with this. And hopefully, that will keep them, yes, that will keep them together. They're going to have to dry now. This one has is so skinny that I'm just gonna bend them up a little bit. The petals, these are all just paper punch outs that I ran through my dye machine with 110 pound Nina cardstock. Oh yeah, you totally can melt, um, d put them together with glossy accents too. That's a really good idea. So now what I'm going to do is heat this one so this one gets wet and then dip this one back in to warm it up so that I can put that next layer on. This will also get rid of some of the edges, smooth out some of the petals as we're heating it. And I'm just going to set that there and let it sit. It's going to um, open up a little bit. If you're worried about where it's sitting, grab something off the side that you have that you can give it a little push. And now I've got it stuck, which is not a big deal because I'm still going to add one more layer. There we go. Do you see why I said the second time I went a lot slower? The first time I went really fast and I got this really smashed looking flower and I wasn't keen on that. The second time I got something that looks a little bit more like what we're trying out here today. Uh oh, I just noticed that somebody mentioned that the store, the store is not active, that's weird. I've never seen that happen. This one's really teeny tiny too, so I'm just going to bend up the petals really gently. You guys, if that if the storefront for the um, Amazon's not working, you can go right to uh, qualitycrafts.com and click on the Amazon link, and there'll be a bunch in there. Now, if there's not a link for something you specifically want, you can go into any uh, through any one of those links and find what you really want. And then that'll still help out the that'll still help out the community here. We'll still get a little um, a little commission on that. <laughs> I was super excited to try it too, and I saw someone else do it. I'm like, yes, we're totally gonna do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this very last one. I'm a little off center here, but that's okay. I think I already said it, but while I'm heating it, it's also smoothing out the petals burning down a little bit of that UD, making it a little bit flatter so you don't have any bumps and stuff. And there we go. Should be able to pick up the bottom. There's also a technique where you can put all of the all of them together. I just think it looks so much better if I just zoom in here. Look at that. There's also another lady that does the technique where she will put the petals all together and then heat the whole bunch of them with the heat gun and let it sit. If you do that, you'll have less glue in the center and it may look a little bit more perfect if you're looking for that perfection, okay? <laughs> Sherry, I totally hear you. I hear you. So that is one full glass flower. Aren't they pretty? So we've got two of them now, actually. 
Now they don't have to be clear like this. And you notice that it's a little yellowed because um, the more you heat up the UD, the more it's gonna amberize or you know yellow, okay? This little petal right here got a little wonky on me. Can you see that? But uh, you know, in nature, things are not exactly perfect. So I don't think that's gonna make any big deal. I would still put that on a flower. I think it's really beautiful. Here's another little star-like flower that I have that's really tiny. Let me show you this one again. Look at that. And I bent up the leaves and then I put one of those tiny little ones like this in the middle. You don't have to do that. You can use whatever you have on hand. And then I put a little bling in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a couple of these and I'm gonna show you how I did that. So first of all, while we're zoomed in, I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch each petal in. And I'm just pinching them on the sides. You could do it with your tweezers. You could cut them with your scissors and curl them up. Like if I use my finger and my fingernail, I could just curl it. If you pull out and up, they'll curl just a little bit. And I'll show you that as soon as I'm done with all of these. So that those curled up a tad. That's gonna be my bottom one, that curly one. This one's gonna go on top. And then I'm gonna try to make one that's even skinnier, smaller. I'm gonna pinch and pull up and pinch, whoops, the wrong way. Pinch up and pull up. Pinch and then pinch. And then I'm gonna push them all up together like this so that I can fit that one in there like that. Okay, so we're gonna put those in there now. We're gonna make this one. And exactly, you're probably thinking exactly what I thought too. I thought, well, if you've got them pinched up like that, as soon as you put them in the hot UD, aren't they just gonna go flat out again? And I'm gonna show you. I personally, I feel like they do flatten out a little bit, but they actually do hold their shape some and it's pretty cool. So, okay, let's go ahead and do the bottom one. And it would be helpful to have a non-stick tool instead of these darn tweezers because they, they end up sticking to stuff. But this is just kind of what I started with and so I'm okay used to that. As long as I drop them while, they're still, while it's still hot, it's usually not an issue. dip this one back in see if I can heat that up so it comes off there we go we're gonna have a lot of beauty in there hey Kiki we're getting some new faces in here new people Patricia and Susan and Kathy Arrow Mama. So that one's just about dried. This one's just about dried. They dry pretty fast. Especially if you, the thinner you do it, the faster they'll dry. This one has a lot of extra UD on it. I'm really gonna try to cut that apart and get rid of that. And don't forget, you can plop it right back in your little melting pot, don't waste it. And then we're gonna put this one together. I'm gonna try the whole um, putting, on, putting them on top of one another and heating the whole darn thing together. 
and see if that works for me. And I think, what do I want to use the edge of? You know what? My pokey tool would probably be the best bet. Where is my pokey tin? Oh, you know what? I have a pokey tool in here, don't I? There it is. Pokey tool on the other side of this guy. Oh, I don't want to use that, though. That's plastic. That's going to come right apart. I need my metal one. For some reason, I can't remember where I put that little guy. Okay. Let's try this one. This is another little tweezers that I bought, and it's also reverse tweezers, but it's got teeny tiny snips on the end of it. I'm going to talk about the hot, I'm glad you brought that up, Lori. I'm going to talk about the hot melt glue pot for doing this kind of stuff in just a second. Right, let's see how that worked. I'm going to give it a minute to cool because I don't want to burn myself. Do we have other questions that I can look at? Is the ultra thick embossing powder the same thing as the ultra thick embossing enamel? Yes. It's all embossing powder. It's just how big the granules are. So this is what I have. It's called ultra thick embossing enamel. Same thing. It's just, um, yeah, super, it's just super thick and it's coarse like salt, like the big, big salt granules. You can also get this kind of look by using regular embossing powder and doing... <laughs> And uh, just doing layer after layer after layer. And we'll get to that in next week's video. I'll show you that. So there we go. That worked too. I just put the layers together and then heated them and all together and squished them down and that stayed. I'm going to put something in the center of that one. There's going to be a loud noise, guys. Just get ready for it. Get ready. Miss Penny used the um, the super chat down below underneath where you type. And it's a one-time donation to the Quality Crafts. And she said, Jen makes fun of the way I say UD. She, she calls it UDI. so I can drop this in there and I don't want to use my hand so I'm going to use my little sticky thing. Oody. She calls it Oody. <laughs> Let's take a look at that one. So this one's similar to this one, except for I just used the bigger flowers and then I put a larger gem in there. And now I definitely want to make a couple of these because these are my favorite. They're a little bit larger, but they're gorgeous. And we're going to use a little bit of colored beauty. Maybe, maybe my, my ding, the little ding-a-ling sound went away. I don't know. Something happened. Hmm. 
All right. I have some of these all ready to go too. These I also did a little bit of pinching and um, manipulating before I dipped them in. So I'm going to, you know, squeeze them and push them up a little bit for the one that's on the inside. Okay, and then I'm gonna just do a little bit for the one on the bottom. And these, there's only two, although you can make as many layers as you want. And I'm going to make sure that when I put that on there, that the petals don't all line up because that'll make your flower look fuller. Before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna stir this up a little bit. I feel like all the amber settles in certain spots and all it's weird. Thanks, Lori. Lori also used the super chat down by where you type. It makes, it, it highlights your comment. She says, love your flowers, so much patience. It does take patience. Um, next one, I'll show you. Well, there it went. I wonder what happened to the last one. <laughs> Darn it anyways. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of color to this one and I used, I'm gonna use this pink one. Let me peel this off of here. So I can see what the name of it is. Fuchsia, it actually literally is called fuchsia. And we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of this in the pot. We may even be able to do a little bit of maybe a blue and pink. Hey, Susie Crafts, Susie Q. It's a little bit um, balled up there, but it's brand new. So I'm just gonna break it up a little bit with my fingers and then just sprinkle some in here. I really think that it would look cool if we did do a couple of colors. So let's try to do pink and blue. Maybe we'll get a little bit of purple. I don't know. We'll swirl it together and see what we get. So these are just already pre-colored. Let me show you what the other one, because I have the tag on that one. Pre-colored UDs. UD brights, they call them. They do have specialized coloring, wet coloring agents that you can squirt in here. Um, don't use alcohol drops, alcohol blenders, all that kind of stuff, because some of them will pop and explode and you will get burned. Um, for this, sometimes I go off the beaten path and say, hey, use what you have, use what's cheaper. In this case, I just definitely wouldn't mess around with that. I don't want anyone getting hurt. So we're gonna, I'm gonna make sure that this is getting in there and getting heated. And then I'm just gonna make a couple of swirls through the whole thing. Okay, not a lot, just a couple, cause I don't want it to go all I don't want to not have it, the colors. I don't want them to all model together and then have nothing. Okay. Um, They may have. I've had this for quite some time. I'm flipping this one over so that the color will land, what I'm looking for, the color I want, will land on the top of the flower and not just all over the bottom of it. I got a couple of bubbles there and some white spots. I'm gonna leave that, I think it looks really cool. And I'm gonna move on with this one. Trying to make sure that all my parts pretty much um, are covered with it. And then I'm gonna drip some of that off. There we go. I've got some white spots and I left them because I think it's going to be really cool. They still do sell um, the coloring agent, the wet coloring drops that you can put in it. Oh, look at that. That did make some really cool purple. We might swirl that together. We'll see how that happens at the end. So while we're letting these dry just a little bit, I want to talk to you about the little glue thing. I have one right here.
Okay, this one is sold by Darius. It looks like this. It's called a hot temp glue pot. I used um, just random glue sticks in mine. They're made for hot or high or low. It didn't matter. Um, and they melted beautifully in here. It takes about 10 minutes, just as they say. Um, and the glue sticks that go in here, they melt and it is messy. You're still going to have strings of glue and stuff. So you have to be very patient when using this last video. If you haven't seen that one, check it out. Um, same with the dyes. I was just reading a com a comment. Um, you can put UD in this and it will melt. We showed that in the last video as well. I played around with it after the video was done, however, and it was very difficult to get the UD from in here into something else or onto something else and out because it's so tiny and because it doesn't get as hot as this, that by the time you take it out of there, it's already dried. It's so fast. So I'm not going to um, not recommend it or recommend it. It's totally up to you what you want to try. I would think that regular embossing powders could be heated in here um, pretty well because they're a lot finer, but it just doesn't get as hot. So I just want you guys to know that. And if you were in the last video and you followed the directions that were thrown on the screen for the um, semi like uh, private not private, what do I want to say? Semi-hidden giveaway um, to give this away. The person that won uh, by random, all the people that did the, the right thing, and we drew a, um, one by random, was Carolyn Miller. So Carolyn Miller, if you're here, you won the little hot temp glue pot by Daris. And if she's not here, we will be getting her information and we'll mail this out to her. Okay, let's go ahead and cut some of this off of here. This turned out really pretty. This one turned out even cooler than the other ones that I did, I think. So I can throw these back in there right now because it's still those um, colors that we used. And I'm going to cut off this other little part that's hanging off the bottom. Okay. Got some more. A little bit more. All right, the only difference between these, I'm bringing in a little bit here, and the ones that I did before was, if they didn't cover exactly and there was some white, I left it because I thought that really made the other parts and the colors stand out. Also on the back, you'll notice that this one got mostly covered, but this one didn't get as covered. I didn't mind because I wanted the top to get the swirls that I was heading for, the parts that I thought looked really cool in the pot, okay? So now we're going to do our best to put these two together. I should be able to heat this, heat this one with the gun and dip this in to re-wet um, it and then put them together. That's just my preferred way I'm gonna do that. I don't think so, Aramama, as far as I know. I, I have not seen anything that says that they're going to come up, up out with something new. I'm disappointed because I think this is really fantastic. And why would they not, you know, they still have some of the other stuff that goes with it. So why would they not continue it? I don't know. And then I'm going to heat the center so we can put whatever pearl, I, pearl we want in there. I'm going to use a white pearl so in case later I want to do something different, I can. Don't worry, Aramama. I'm going to show you some really cool techniques that you can do using the UD that you don't need the melting pot for next week. So tune in for that.
Now remember, when you're heating that center, it's actually heating everything around it because of how large this opening is. So don't just go ahead and stick your finger in there and think you're going to play around with that bead, which is why I was kind of taking these and pushing them in or um, the tip of this and just dropping it in because it's going to reheat all that and you don't want to burn yourself on that either. That is something I've often wondered too, Sandy Swanson. The fragrance wax burners, would that work? I don't know how hot they get. But if somebody tries it and finds out, let us know. I'd really like to know. So there we go. We've got one. I'm going to show, I'm going to bring in the other two that I did before. So you can see the difference in the colors that I used. Okay, so the one that we did today, the blue and the pink together. That's really pretty. This one was the blue and the bronze, which is why I picked a bronze pearl. And then this one was just blue. Blue in the regular white beauty. They are just stunning. I love making those. Those are my favorites. So let's move on. I did talk about the beauty pot. We announced the winner. Smoke Signal Creations. How cool. What a neat name. Thanks, Peggy. And so I do want to try um, a few more things with this. Because I want to use this up so that I can dump gold in there. Look what I look what I still have on the end of this as well, too. Do you see that? So if I pull this off of here, I have a piece. It almost looks like a, a see-through butterfly wing. How cool is that? That's neat. You can maybe use that on your art. Mixed media. And all I did was dip my spatula in it, and that's what came off my spatula. Do you see that? Cool. Oh, thanks, Susan. If you're enjoying this series, give me a thumbs up. That also lets YouTube know that you really like this kind of thing, and it'll bump my videos closer to the top so more people can see them. All right. I want to do another thing. I want to do some pouring into a mold because I have not done that. I didn't say we were going to do that, but I wasn't sure how much time we would have. So we're going to do that, and then I'm going to get to the chipboard. And then at the end, we're going to do um, a little bit of stamping, which I believe we did some stamping last time. So I'm going to be very careful in picking this up. And I'm going to pour just as much as I need. I need to move a couple of things just to make sure that I have got plenty of give in my line so I don't make a mistake and accidentally burn myself. You might not be able to see this 100% completely. Um, I'm going to try my best not to overfill them. It's You have to be very careful and move rather slowly, I think. And you can't like pour it in and then stop and then do another re-pour. It doesn't work that way. Um, so I'm hoping that some of that will move over and touch the edge because I didn't get quite enough in there. But we're going to let that dry and then we're going to pop those out in a little bit. There are other videos out there if you want to see a lot more of this type of thing. Check them out. see how much we've got left here. We've got quite a bit. I'm just going to smear some of that color out here. Look at that. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. So this, I'm going to show you with this one when we dump it out. Where's that big old piece of cracked stuff that I showed you guys at the beginning? Some of you guys probably missed it. Oh, here it is. So this is what I did at the end of my last batch. Only instead of using the stamp I'm going to use right now, I used um, some kind of a background stamp. Which one is that one? This this one, I think. I used this one to make this one. Okay, so you can use any background stamp you want. And then I added mica over the top of that. So... You don't have to add the mica. That's totally up to you. But I highly recommend, if you're going to do this pour and stamp, that you put Versamark on your um, stamp for an easier release. 
So I'm going to use this Versamark, which is basically just clear, wet ink. That's all it is. And I'm going to make sure that my stamp is just really well inked with that Versamark. An hour goes super fast, doesn't it, when we're doing stuff like this? It's like, oh my gosh. It's like, boom, it's gone. I wonder if we want to do maybe one more mold. This would be kind of an interesting one. I don't even know if I can fill this one appropriately, but let's try it. It's kind of wonky. Because I have quite a bit in there. Nah, I really overfilled it. <laughs> Super overfilled. That's okay. I'm not going to worry about that. It's overfilled. We're going to see what happens with that. All right, now the rest of it I'm going to pour out. This is all inked with my verse mark and ready to go, and I'm going to put it on this mat. That way, if I want to lift this mat up, I can. We're going to try to get all the rest of this out of here. Oh, wait a second. No, before I do that, be careful too. If you already own one or if you're thinking of getting one or if you get a used one, oh my gosh, I have to tell you this. When you're grabbing onto these and you get your fingers on the insides here, mm -hmm. your fingers are desperately close to the inside of that. You could really burn them. You really have to use your pinchers, your thumb and your fingers, and not wrap your hand around that because you can, dang, you can feel that heat. I'm just saying. <laughs> I was going to do some um, fun stuff and add some glitter to this and see what happens. So let's add a little bit of glitter to that. I'm going to do a little bit of this one because it's blue. This one is coral, but it kind of reminds me of that pink. I wanted to try this last time and I completely forgot. And I'm going to swirl that in there. Somebody said that not to do this because you could, it would stick to the inside of the pot. I'm sure it will, but we're going to give it a go. And I'll show you how to clean the pot out when I'm done with this pour. You want to get all of it out of that little tip if you can. That's the hardest place to clean. The edges in this front tip thing. Maybe that's another reason why they, they didn't revamp it. They should have just revamped it and made it a little bit better and then released it again. So we've got a big blob of hot, super hot, gooey, glittery beautifulness. We're going to just set this on here. I'm not even going to squish it. I'm just setting it down. It kind of moved a little bit and it's oozing out. Okay. And then to clean this while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to move this one over here. We're just going to wipe this out with a towel, a couple of towels. Now I've done this a couple of times. Make sure that you're not folding your towel over and burning yourself with the stuff that's left on it because it's you're wiping up hot plastic. So I just kind of scoop that in there. Do you see that? Well, they say grab this and throw it away. Don't even use it. Don't even re, you know roll it over or whatever but I know from experience that this will dry pretty fast and so I'm going to go ahead and tuck mine and do one more ever if you're ever just not sure don't don't do it just don't do it all right garbage for that one and maybe one more for the corners. 
and the tip. There is a little tiny bit of glitter I can see, but we all know that glitter follows you everywhere for weeks and weeks after using it. So I <laughs> just kind of expect that. And so now what I want to do is I want to put the gold in there. I'm going to move these out of the way so they don't get heated up while they're in their bottles. So I would suck to like totally waste an entire bottle because I got it too close to a heat source. And there's the gold. So now we're going to melt some gold in here. You guys will get a chance to see how quickly this melts. Am I still in? Oh, there we go. So this is literally just called gold. We're going to dump a bunch in here. And I won't need that much, so I'm going to try not to use too much. Oh my gosh, you can already see that melting. Move this over just a little bit because I want you guys to be able to see that. I'm bring it in a couple of clicks. Check this out. Look at that, it's like molten gold. How cool is that? So cool! All right, let me back out and then I will put the cover on there so we can get that going. Cause we, we got about 10 minutes left. Probably be, be perfect timing. Let me set that off to the side. These, they don't feel very warm at all. So let's go ahead and pull this out. Now, one thing that's kind of a bummer is that you'll notice how shiny these are. But the part that's inside the mold, I, I believe, will not be as shiny. So let's just see if we can get these out of here. Oh, look at that. And you can still cut off the little stragglers. Just a little bit there. There we go. Look at that butterfly. It's really pretty on the back, so maybe I'd want to use it that way. Because it's glossy and you can see a lot of the color. But all the details on this side. So cool. And then we've got a little teeny tiny one. Let's pop that guy out. Oh, how cute is that? It's so little. That's adorable. Can we put that one on top of this big one, maybe? Oh, not quite, because there's a bump. Oh, those are super cute. Alrighty, let's check our gold. Kiki said you could do a quick heat up with your glue gun, but not too long though. I did that with this one. Oops. I tried that with this one. Um, and I did get a little bit of shine, but not as much as I wanted to. So I ended up adding mica. But you can do like the backside here. That's kind of, listen. You could put some alcohol inks on the backside and they'll show through. And it'll be really bright. So that's really fun. This is starting to actually steam a little bit. Man. Okay. Let's see if we can get this one off of here. It's still a little warm. I'm gonna let this one go for a bit. I wanna get this moving. We'll, we'll take that one off in just a second. The center is the hottest part, and so that's the part that seems to be, like, just getting all crazy. Man. All right. I'm going to do, I think, the smallest of these. We're going to use a little piece of chipboard here. I don't know what brand this is or anything, or how thick or anything like that. I just grabbed a piece from my stash. So it's probably a millimeter or so thick. Yeah, like maybe one millimeter. We're going to try to dip this in here and get this to be gold. I'm 
going to peel this up first because I want to do the same stamp on this butterfly too. Oh, I broke a piece. That's okay. Look at all that. You can um, you can also stamp uh, stays on black stays on if you want a black impression on here so that you can see it. I would pick a bolder stamp too. This one you can't see the detail as well. And I have the other piece too because I snapped it off. That's okay because I want to reuse this. So let me get out my Versa mark before this. This gold just seems to be like glad that didn't land in there. It just seems to be um. Man, just heating up and smoking. Can you see that? I'm like thinking, let's get get her done and get her out of there. All right. This is the only part that I have not done yet. I wanted to experiment with this with you guys and see how the gold would turn out. And right now I'm feeling like maybe I muddied it a little bit with something, but it looks like poop. <laughs> it looks like diarrhea. We'll let that, we'll let that um, cool just a little bit. I'm gonna put this on there. Actually, I'm not. I don't like the way that one turned out. Let's do a different one. Let's do, no, well, no, the black's not going to show up. What other one can we do? I think I'm just going to leave it for right now because I'm not real happy with the way this one turned out. But I can always save this. Now, I'm, I'm not going to throw this in the garbage because, oh, that turned out really crappy. I'm going to save this glittery, this glittery fun stuff, and I'm going to reheat this in the glue pot on another day and make something else out of it. I can do the same thing with that other piece that I have, this piece right here. This can go back in as well. I wouldn't mix a whole lot of stuff together, though, because, of course, that's just going to turn brown. And who, unless you're making something brown and you needed that color, I'm not sure how many people would want that. There's also, um, you can add things to this. So, like, we could add some, we could add some little teeny micro beads I'm not sure how hot that is yet and I've got some bubbles on that that are, are looking really cool Woo, it's popping the bubbles we're going to have some really neat stuff going on here guys oh that looks so cool I'm going to show you in just a second I'm going to see if I can get a couple of these beads to stick Now they're starting to roll around. I just blew them all over. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to pick those up in just a minute. I have to wait for that to cool. Um, if you get micro beads or things that are rolling around and you've got one of these, these will pick up mica. They'll pick up this whole dang thing. Um, they will pick. It will pick up mica. It will pick up teeny tiny beads that are rolling around and then all you have to do is just knock them off into the garbage with your hand which is what I'm doing right now okay and even if they roll off your mat somewhere else we're just going to chase those little buggers we're going to pick them all up if we dropped mica on here which is basically just eyeshadow and stuff it'll pick up that it picked up all the glue pieces it's amazing. And then when it gets dirty and you can't knock any more off, you just go rinse it under the sink and reuse it. I'm just going to knock off a few of the beads that didn't stick. Cut that off and show you guys what happened here. Look at that. I should have honed in on that while that was going, but I was just so enamored. What a neat piece and I've got some um, teeny tiny micro beads on there that's so cool oh nice Kiki's bringing us some more information so I'll turn this down a tad for the gold 
Maybe the gold just heats up way too quickly. It looks cool. I'm going to put some on either side of this and let this dry. And then I'm going to um, take it off of there. I'll make a little gold. I'm sorry, you guys couldn't see me. Duh. <laughs> I'm going to take it off of there. I'm going to make a gold piece here. And then I'm going to do a pouring with this last gold that we have left because we're at 6 o'clock already. I'm just having so much fun. I lost track of the time. Ah, bummer. All right, let me put those away. I'm waiting for this to dry because then I'm going to pop that off of here. And I wonder if I can just set this down now. And we're going to pop this guy out of here too. Yeah, he's dry. Now that's cool too. Look at that. Let's try the trick. Let's try the trick that Kiki mentioned about what if we just put a little bit of heat on there and see if we can get it to shine up a little bit. Oh, it did. It melted a little bit and the edges started shining. I have to wait a second now. Let that cool. This one's still hot. Susan, you just got notified that we're live. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So here, you can tell, especially on the edges, that it did get shiny. So shiny on this side, see that? And then mm -hmm. now the edges are shiny. Oh, this one is still hot. But I need this, this so I'm going to just pop it off of here. Look at that. Now we've got a, little, a gold piece and there's a hole in it. Just like the one that we made like that looks like the butterfly. Oh, this one's a lot more delicate. A lot less on that one. Neat. That was just an experiment. I'm not going to stamp this one, but I certainly am going to get rid of all those little beads before I start because I don't want those beads to go all over the place. I'm just going to get rid of the beads. There's one. There's a couple that went under there. And catch them up. There we go. I'm going to knock those beads into the garbage and move my tool. And then we're going to just pour the rest of this gold and then we'll be done. Don't forget next week we're going to totally do some of this embossing, ultra thick embossing enamel without the pot. Oh, thank you for subscribing. All right, let's see if we can get this out of here. See, you know, I turned, I turned it down. Oh, stuck my finger in there. Let me turn it back up because now it's not hot enough to run. Look at that. It's like becoming a paste. Ooh, bet we bet we could do some fun stuff with that. If I had a mixed media, I could turn that down, turn it into a paste, and like just paint it onto something. That'd be fun. I was just thinking maybe we could put some in one of those. One of these guys. Nah, I'm just going to wait for this to heat up just a little bit more. Oh, see now it's getting runny already. It does not take long for this thing to get super ultra hot. Like holy cannoli. The piece that came off of my rubber spatula is in there, so I'm going to get that to go, too. I stuck my finger way too far. Oh, my gosh. I forgot to back you guys up, so you missed that completely. Ugh, silly me. All right. So this is getting a lot runnier. It was a paste where I could paint it like this. My apologies that you didn't get to see it. It almost looks like chocolate now. And now it's getting a little bit runnier. It heats up really fast. I'm really sorry you didn't miss the paste part, but it was super thick. Almost like a thicker than glue. Now we're now that it's getting runnier, it'll come out of here faster. Easier. We'll do a pour. I ended up sticking my finger too far underneath here, and I touched that thing and burnt myself. I don't have a burn. Like, it's not hurting now because um, I touched it. This little black mat is just um, from a cooking set that I have upstairs. You can get those on Amazon, too.
I can always reuse this later on. So I'm just going to make sure that I try to get all as much as I possibly can and get that all on my mat and just let it dry. And of course it'll come off of here. And if I'm not going to use this, this can also get tossed in back in later. Cause that's also part of the gold. I'm going to put this down and I'm going to turn this off. But while it's still warm, I'm going to wipe that out. If you wait until it's cold to wipe it out, I think that it should be nonstick and come off, but I didn't try that. I just want to make sure it gets clean. So it's ready the next time I want to use it. So while I'm cleaning this up, if you guys could just maybe say one thing that you really like about the Quality Crafts channel. It doesn't even have to be about this specific video, but what's something that the KTC or the Jen Evers video channel does for you that you're truly um, finding value from, that you really appreciate? got some on the outside even that might crack off later we'll have to try that so there's a little piece in the middle off that didn't come off we'll check that when it dries to see if maybe I can scrape that off with my scraper once that's clean I'm gonna move that off to the side Kelly hello we're just um, finishing up we start at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time live and it's a little after six. I try to um, end at approximately an hour, but sometimes it's earlier, sometimes it's later. Um, so what do we got? We've got no drama. Yes, KTC over on Facebook is another group that you can join that um, coincides with this. It's all a uh, connected community. And we have uh, no commitment there, no drama. So you want to stop in there, um, become a member, answer the questions so that you can get all of the newest and latest information about what's going on. Cancellations, new videos, different kinds of garage sales, that kind of stuff. When we're going to do things, what we're releasing. How kind everyone is. That's cool. Jen does a lot of different crafts. Thank you. Love all the tutorials. Thanks, guys. awesome. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's crafting. And if you really liked this, go back and check out the video just before this one on my channel. And also come back next Friday as we use UD in different ways without the melting pot. So if you don't have the melting pot, or maybe you don't have the UD, but you've got other embossing powders, come stop. I check that out. See, I didn't have a drink this whole time. No wonder why I'm dry. Cheers. Oh, and that's the water. You hear that? It run, runs the water. It's so loud down here because I'm in the basement, if you guys didn't know that. If you want to know more about my um, private life, as you were, or behind the scenes, that kind of stuff, you definitely want to jump in on Patreon. Patreon.com backslash quality crafts. Join us there. Give us your best pledge. Uh, can have the join and support the community so that we can keep going on on and on into the sunset forever and ever um, I would love to make this my full-time job and be with you guys all the time right now I am back at school I'm an interpreter for the deaf and an SEA a student educational aide so shout out to all my teachers for teachers interpreters everybody who works in the school districts um, for your first day or your first week back I should say we made it we made it to Friday Woo all right, guys, I really, really had fun today, and I cannot wait to see you guys next video.